Uh, but uh, this morning, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, uh, I'd like for you to turn to Hebrews chapter number 11. We're going to talk about this morning uh, 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 walking with the Lord. Walking with the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're going to read about a man that uh, uh, not a lot to us is revealed to, to us uh, from a, a scripture in scripture about, but uh, Enoch walked with the Lord and he had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. And uh, this morning I hope that it's your heart's desire to not only walk with the Lord, but as you walk with the Lord, be pleasing uh, unto the Lord in your walk with Him. Amen. I think if I were to ask everybody here this morning, uh, how would you uh, uh, would, how would you like to uh, to be viewed of God? You would say, I want God's blessings upon my life, and I want to please the Lord with my life. Uh, we're going to look at four things this morning of uh, things that we can do to please the Lord. A life that pleases God is a life of faith. A life that pleases God is a life of fellowship with Him. A life that pleases God is a life of faithfulness in the, for the believer. And a life that pleases God is a life that produces fruit. And we're going to look at those four things this morning by the grace of God. And so, Hebrews chapter number 11 Let's pick up reading in verse number 1. The Word of God declares unto us this morning, Church, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaking. Verse number 5, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before, before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this time that you've allowed us to assemble together in thy house to come together to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we are thankful for your word and for the truth and instruction that we receive from thy word. And Father, this morning, may it be our heart's desire for each and every one of us here that we want to walk with thee, dear Lord, and we want to uh, please you uh, in every area and every aspect of our life. And so, Father, I pray that uh, uh, this morning that, uh, uh, that you would help us this morning uh, as we look to the bread of life. I pray that you feed our spiritual souls. Father, I pray that you help me this morning as I preach. Lord, I pray that you give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach the truth of love and to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Heavenly Father, if there is one here this morning that does not know Thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that You convict their heart of sin and judgment to come, that You draw them to Yourself, and that they'd come forward and be saved today before it is eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank You and praise You for what You've done. We thank You and praise You for what You're going to do. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 oftentimes is referred to God's Hall of Faith, if you will, uh, football and baseball and other sports have halls of fame, if you will. And here we get to Hebrews chapter number 11, and a lot of times it's referred to as a hall of faith because as you go through and read this particular portion of Scripture, you read about men and women, and you are reminded about their great faith that they have in Jesus Christ. Uh, beloved, there's nothing special about these people. They're not different from you and I. They're made out of the same type of flesh that you and I are made of. But they trusted the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. And here we get to the book of Hebrews. And the author of the book of Hebrews, under inspiration of the Holy Ghost, reminds, me about the, reminds us about these people who had great faith in God. Amen. And beloved, this morning, do you have faith in God? Amen. Are you truly trusting God with every need in every area of your life this morning? Amen. I hope that you are. Uh, Jesus Christ said for us to, to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. Amen. And beloved, if you want to be pleasing to God this morning, yeah. have faith in God. You say, preacher, I don't, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. 
Have faith in God that He will send the meal your way through someone, through some program, through something. But God is going to take care of His children. Keep trusting God. You say, preacher, I don't know how we're going to make the car payment. I don't know how we're going to make the, the house payment. Trust the Lord. Amen. Have faith in God. I remember uh, when me and Christy first got married, uh, our faith was put uh, put to the test early, if you will. Uh, 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 I'd uh, been in the wilderness. I'd been like that prodigal son. I'd been wandering from the Lord. But I had begun my journey back and was becoming more and more faithful in the things of God and uh, uh, trying to put more trust in God and surrender more of my life to God. He must increase, but I must what? decrease amen and i was surrendering more and more areas of my life to the lord and then we get to that area of finances amen now, i know uh, now i know now this is a baptist church we start talking about money uh baptist people get a little bit nervous when we start talking about money now we're talking about tithing and offer uh, and all, uh giving our offer offers this morning but beloved in the area of finances uh you know I, i'm a numbers guy to a certain extent and when i was adding up the numbers you know what? The expenses were more than the income. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, this is not good. And I was too proud to ask my mom and dad for help. And I told Christy, I said, I said, don't you say anything to your parents because I said, they'll worry us to death uh, about, about finances. I said, we, 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 we have coveted together. We're going to give God our lives and we're going to trust God. And God somehow, some way is going to take care of us. Amen. And beloved, uh, in, in the matter of, of tithes and offerings, uh, 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 went through a discipleship program, and I realized that I wasn't giving God duty what, uh, back to Him what was truly His. I was just tipping God and giving out of uh, convenience or abundance. But I wasn't being faithful uh, uh, and honest with the Lord with my tithes and offerings, and we started to do that. And let me tell you something. Before you know it, the bank account began to have a little bit of a surplus. And as we abided faithful, more and more of a surplus began to build up in the bank. And beloved, then when the hot water heater tore up, when the car tore up, God had met our need ahead of time. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, beloved, uh, uh, this morning, whatever, whatever area it is of your life, uh, beloved, put your faith and trust Amen. in the Lord. Uh, I was speaking with a, a fellow pastor yesterday at the graveside service. Uh, or no, I guess this was Friday night at West Side. It was after, uh, right before the service, I believe it was. And he said, I, I, he said, I knew that you had cancer, but I thought that God had healed you of that cancer and that you were doing okay. And I said, well, I do appreciate that. And I said, I will say this in regard to the healing. And I said, God is going to heal me one day in the future. That much I do know. Now, yes, I would like to have the healing, and I'd like to have it now. I'd like to go to Ray Vanderbilt this coming Friday, and when they do the CT scan, and when I see the doctor, yeah, guess what? All those lesions on your lungs is gone. That tumor in your neck is gone. We don't understand what's happened. I understand what has happened. Amen. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the great physician, has provided healing to my body. But if it's not God's will for, for, for Him to heal me in this lifetime, when I step out into eternity, <laughs> I'm going to receive a healing then. Amen. Yes, sir. And so, beloved, uh, uh, God's going to heal me at some point in the future, one way or the other, at some point in time. I'm going to be healed. Amen. I just don't know when it's going to take place, but I know that it is going to take place. Amen. And I trust God, and I believe God by faith that that's going to happen. Amen. Amen. And so maybe a physical need, a spiritual need, a financial need, whatever it is, put your faith and trust in the Lord. It may not, it may not add up on paper. It may not make sense. But God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And beloved, we just simply need to trust Him. The Bible tells us as a child of God, we're not to live by sight, not to add up the numbers, but to trust God and live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. And so, yes, looking at it on paper, it don't add up. I don't say how we're going to, how ends are going to, uh, how we're going to make ends meet, how we're going to get by. You look at the pictures on the scans. You say uh, you're not ever going to be healed. Hey, I trust God by faith. One day I am going to be healed. Amen. 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 
And so, uh, beloved, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Uh, talking about uh, 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 those that uh, had labored before and uh, had put their faith and trust in God and seen the miracles of God and seen the faithfulness of God. And notice here, verse number three, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Uh, beloved, God spoke everything that is living into existence, amen. And he took the dust of the ground and breathed it to the dust of the ground. Uh, uh, the, uh, 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 he breathed it to the dust of the ground and guess what? Man became what? A living soul. And so, beloved, everything that's in existence, God created it. Uh, some people like to believe in evolution, the Big Bang Theory, whatever the case may be, but God is the creator of everything that is in existence. Amen. We notice verse number four, uh, the, the, the record is starting to unfold here, and some examples uh, from uh, the scriptures are given to us. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, talking about the Cain and Abel, the brothers, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. And notice here in verse number five, and this is where I want us to spend a little bit of time here this morning uh, by, the, by the grace of God. Notice here in verse number five, by faith. When you start going through and you read this portion of Scripture, the individuals that are mentioned, there's two important words that are mentioned before their names, by faith, by faith, by faith. They trusted the Lord. It didn't make sense. It didn't add up. But they didn't question God. They didn't turn their back on God. They didn't quit on God. By faith, they believed God and trusted God. Amen. And beloved, if it'll work with them, it'll work with us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And notice here, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him for before, before, before his translation. He had this testimony that he pleased God. And we all know the story that uh, Enoch walked with God and then God took him. It's a picture of the rapture of the church. And we know the next prophetic thing to take place on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. I know the word rapture is never used in scripture, but the very definition of it, the calling out or the catching out is, and beloved, that's the next thing that's going to take place on God's calendar. And beloved, I believe it can happen at any time. The things that's happening on the world scene today and the way that uh, the love of many uh, 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 is waxing cold and because of all the apostasy that's taking place in the world and evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hey, it all points to one thing, the return of Jesus Christ. I don't know when he's coming back, but I know he's coming back and I trust that by faith and beloved according to the scriptures and the things that Christ told us to look out for, I believe it's going to take place soon. Amen. 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 You know, I've heard people say, uh, a Preacher, uh, my grandfather told me that. My great-grandfather told me that. I've heard that preached all my life, and he's not coming back yet. Just because he ain't come back yet doesn't mean he's not coming back. Doesn't mean he's not coming back. For each day that passes by and that he does not come back means that we're that one, one day closer to his coming back. Amen. Yes. And so we all know the story of Enoch, how God took him. It says, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him before his translation. He had this testimony, and what a wonderful testimony this is, that he pleased God. Amen. And just for a few minutes, I want you to ask yourself this question in your heart. If God were to call you home today, do you have that testimony that your life pleased God? That when you stand before the Lord in judgment, he will look down upon you and say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, there are four things that I believe that we can do with our lives that will please God. And one of, one of those things that is here in our text that we just read, a life that pleases God is a life that is lived by faith. Notice the very next verse, number six. But without what, church? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them 
that diligently seek Him. Beloved, this morning, are you living a life of faith? Are you trusting God by faith this morning to meet your spiritual needs, to meet your financial needs? Are you trusting God with your children, with your grandchildren, with your, with your career, with your school? Are you trusting God by faith? Are you living by faith? Amen. Oh, I tell you, there's so many people today that sit around and they worry and they literally drive themselves insane because of everything that's taking place in the world. Uh, beloved, I missed my mother after the service yesterday, the graveside service. Uh, I decided to go spend a little time with mom and dad. And so when the service was concluded, I drove up to their, their burial plot and uh, me and Christy spent a little bit of time with them yesterday. And I'll tell you, I miss my mom and dad. I, I have comfort in knowing where my mom and dad is at. I know that they're in the presence of Jesus. And you may think I'm crazy, but uh, uh, you say, uh, uh, preacher, you know they're not there. You know they're, they're with the Lord, but it makes me feel better to go there and spend time with them. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, believe that, I believe the Bible teaches us and tells us and indicates that there's windows in heaven. And who knows if God will open up that window, window the time you're standing there above that graveside and say, look. He still, he still loves you. He's still thinking about you. He's remembering you. And he's thanking me right now for you. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I was there at the graveside. and I was talking to mom and dad yesterday. And, and, and I tell you, I love mom. I miss mom. But bless mom's heart. If there's one thing she did in this life, is she'd sit around and she'd worry about things. And she'd call me up. And JB will, uh, will testify this. And she did Carol the same way. She'd call us up and she'd talk to us about different different individuals. I don't know what we're going to do about them. I wish they'd get their life straightened up. I wish they'd start living for God. I just want so much for them to, to get through this. And I pray for them that God will give them victory over this. I tell you, I'd love to have one more call from Mom. To hear her talk about praying for somebody else and desiring to see God work in somebody else's life. But I tell mom, I said, you know, mom, I said, you're halfway right, you're halfway home, honey. I said, yeah, pray for them. But I said, you just got to trust God by faith. I said, you, yeah. you got to quit worrying about things you can't control. Just give it to the Lord. And, 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 and she said, well, son, I'm trying to. And I believe there'd be times she'd give things to the Lord, and then she'd take them right back sometimes, I believe. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. If you want to please God this morning, you live your life yeah. by faith as Amen. a child of God. Amen. It may not add up on, on paper. It may not seem like the most uh, the, the best path to travel down. You say, well, Lord, it's much shorter, much smoother to go this way. But he may take you through Samaria instead. He may take you the long way around, the rough way around to get there. But there's a reason for it. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 38, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Listen, if you're a war at work this morning and you're trying to manipulate everything, trying to control everything, let me tell you something. God's not pleased with you this morning. That's a child of God. The Bible tells us to cast their care upon him because he cares for you and whatever's troubling your heart this morning, why don't you cast it upon the Lord and trust him by faith and let God go to work. Amen. And so a life that pleases God is a life that is lived by faith. A life that pleases God is a life in fellowship with the Lord. Now listen, I enjoy fellowship with the brethren. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, the only time, and I hate to say this regrettably, and please don't take what I'm about to say wrong, but sometimes the only time that I see some of my, my kin, some of my family, and some of my friends is at a funeral home service. I hate to say it that way. But sometimes that's the only time I see people in person and get to have fellowship with them. Uh, but beloved, uh, you know, uh, God wants us to have fellowship one with another, but he also wants us to have fellowship with him. Yeah. When's the last time you've been alone with the Lord and had fellowship with him? When's the last time you've been by yourself and got in your prayer closet and just poured out your heart to God? When's the last time you got alone with God? Away from the phone, away from the TV, away from the cats and dogs, 
and you just had fellowship with God, then you praised His name for saving your wretched soul. And you praised His name for answering your prayer. You praised His name for feeding you. You praised His name for the roof over your, over your head. You praised His name for the love that He loves you with. Amen. When's the last time you've done this? Amen. He wants to have fellowship with His children. It pleases Him. Amen. You know, uh, we heard Brother Jimmy testify just a few minutes ago that his friend had been six years since she had spoken to her children. Six years. I can only imagine the joy that was in her soul when she 